As the owner of a consulting agency, if I misjudge our team's capacity, then it's very easy to start losing money. In this video, I'm gonna show you the actual systems that we use in Asana to avoid ever losing money on a project. Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. In this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and I'm gonna show you how I actually use the workload feature in my business. I use this all the time for things like when I sign up a new client and we start a new project, I can quickly see who on my team has capacity and who I should assign that project to. It also helps me to identify our lead time. So if I'm talking to a prospect, I can look at our team's workload and see we can start this project in about two weeks and I can make sure everyone's workload is nicely balanced. And if I've done a good job and optimized everyone's workload, I can then identify, do we need to hire a new consultant to take on more work, which actually recently we did. So here's how we've set up this workload view in our Asana account at Mineco. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that we are using the universal workload feature. Uh, what I mean by that is there's actually a couple of different ways of creating a workload view depending on the plan that you're on. Uh, if you have the advanced plan or higher, you can set up a workload at the portfolio level. Here we go, we can create a portfolio workload. So if you're on the free or starter plan, unfortunately, you do need to be on at least the advanced plan in order to create a portfolio workload. And an example of that would be here in our demo account, if I go to portfolios, Here's a portfolio I've created called All Projects. This is sort of like a high level dashboard view. Actually, I'm gonna link up here um, how to get started with portfolios if you wanna go and check out that. And so within this portfolio, there's a number of projects we've put in here and there is a workload tab where you can visualize the um, estimated hours or number of tasks assigned to people on your team, but it's only within the context of this portfolio or the projects in the portfolio. So that's portfolio workload. If you get the enterprise plan or higher, which we have, you can create a universal workload. And so you can do that from the reporting section in Asana. If you come to workload views, I've created a workload view here called team workload. And this is looking at all tasks with estimated hours across our entire account. It's more universal. It's not just looking at tasks in those selected projects. It doesn't mean, I mean, you can still get a full workload view if you set up a portfolio correctly. And this is something we can help with if you are interested. But in the context of how we do it, we are using universal workload. Oh, and if you are interested in upgrading, maybe you're on the free or starter plan, but want to go to advanced or enterprise, you can request a quote from us uh, in the link in the description below. As one of Asana Solution partners, you can buy through us and we'll give you a discount on the retail price. Now, the way we've set up this universal workload is we are measuring our capacity using estimated time. You can measure capacity using task count or percentage allocation. But to be honest, if I were to switch that to task count now, I find this to be not very useful because it doesn't really tell me how much work or how much capacity people really have. I mean, I can see how many tasks they've got, but I don't know, you know, for these nine tasks here, is that nine tasks that take five minutes or is that nine hours of work? I don't know. So I much prefer to use estimated time. I think it's a more accurate, reliable way to measure people's capacity. And we can edit people's capacity here. My team are contractors. And so I've said, right, let's say Andrew's estimated hours are 30, Dave 30, Holly 10, um, Kayla 20. So I can set everyone's available hours differently. You do want to, if you are setting this up for yourself, give consideration to uh, time that the team will need to spend on miscellaneous admin work. You'll, you'll notice here, I haven't set, even my own capacity, I haven't set as 40 hours, you know, 40 hours is a typical working week, but I'm assuming that a certain amount of time is gonna be lost to meetings, email, just general admin. So I really only have 30 hours of actual capacity to do client work or other, other tasks. So I've set our team's capacity and we're using estimated time to track the work. And so if you look at, um, let's say Andrew here, we can see uh, tomorrow he's got two hours of work scheduled, two and a half on Friday. And if you click and expand, I can even come in here and I can see uh, the tasks that are making up his workload. So there's the one of the hours for tomorrow and there's the second hour down there. You'll notice some of these tasks, like these follow-ups, 
these actually do not have estimated time on them. So those tasks are not contributing towards Andrew's workload. So that's just something to keep in mind is you're using this method that we use, you're only going to be able to see the estimated work for the, for the tasks that actually have estimated hours filled in. For this video, I wanted to share more of a behind the scenes look at how we actually use the workload view at Minico. But if you'd like to see more of a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to set up a portfolio or universal workload, then leave me a comment down below and make sure you subscribe so you can see when that comes out. Now, where we plan most of our work is here in this client's project. Here's an example client, and so we, we manage our clients, and clients are kind of like projects really, but we, we manage them as tasks in Asana in this client's project. So we've got John Smith here, and we, we plan our work for each client using subtasks. So here's an example of a call with John that I have today, and we actually integrate Calendly, which is our booking system, with Asana. We do that through Zapier, and I think we have a video about that, which I'll link up here if you wanna see how to integrate Asana with Zapier. And so in this case, when John booked his call, Zapier created a subtask in Asana. And you can see the estimated time here has been filled in because we have estimated time, let me back out of here, set up as a custom field in the project. So we've got estimated time as one of our fields. And so now that estimated time field appears both on the parent task and here in our subtasks. If John in this case had booked a 30 minute meeting, this would show us 30 minutes. We then also, we schedule our own work as well. So if I've got, uh, let's say I'm gonna set up some templates, I'm gonna do this next week from Monday to Friday. I've then manually put in here, this is five hours of work that I've estimated. So if I go back to my team workload, if I expand on my name here, I can see for today, there's the one hour call with John today. And next week, there's the five hours, work, uh, five hours of work scheduled for next week. And you'll notice that those five hours have been, have been evenly distributed across the, um, the week. So it's one hour per day for those five working days. And we have that estimated time field added to uh, most of our projects actually. So if you go down to Warwick down here, you'll see he's got some time in the uh, content project um, assigned to him in our operations and some of our other big retainer client projects. And so, the nice thing about using universal workload is we just need to use that custom field, estimated time, and as soon as we fill in those estimated hours, the, the workload view updates. This really does take minimal effort to, to update and maintain. You just create the task, estimate the hours, and everyone's tasks from all of their projects updates in here. And so you can see, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a very visual way of seeing who has capacity. So Dave, for example, this is uh, Dave who recently joined our team. He's got, he's completely open right now. My, my job now is to get him booked up. I want the next project that comes in is gonna be going to Dave because he's got lots of capacity there. I can see some people like Lindsay, pretty booked up here. Her, her, she's pretty well optimized. She's nice and consistent. Um, I can see times where people are overbooked. So Warwick, he's got this little red block here. Um, it's showing that he's actually over capacity for that particular day. Uh, Holly here, three hours for that particular today, that particular day, eight hours back here. So I can see where people are starting to get too much work assigned to them. And I could jump in here and I could look at that task and kind of work out what's going on. Maybe I decide to reassign that task to somebody else or change the deadline if I need to. I can also, if I look forward, I can see kind of what that lead time looks like. So I can see, you know, we're scheduled about a week or two out. Um, we, we could be starting a new project. Uh, I could be assigning a new project to most people on my team around sort of late June here, where, where our capacity is freeing up. Of course, this is only showing the work that we have planned right now. There might be tasks assigned to them that just simply, like these ones here, that don't have estimated hours on them. So this is only as good as what you put into it. Uh, you do need to be putting those estimated hours on. You do need to have dates on your tasks. If you don't have a date on the task or subtask, it's not gonna show up in this view. But for me, as a manager or the owner of the business, it's, it's a really nice, quick, visual way that I can see who's booked up, who has capacity, who am I gonna assign the next project to.
If you run a client-facing business like mine, or if you have any kind of business where your revenue and your profitability is tied to how quickly and efficiently you can execute on a project, then this workload feature really is a game changer. If you'd like help setting this up for your business, then click the link in the description below to book an introductory call with our team and we can explore our consulting and support options with you. Or if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.